Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for organizing this great event. The Faroe Island and Iceland are great sources of inspiration when we discuss how to secure dynamic and sustainable communities in the Arctic. Both the Faroe Island and Iceland have created dynamic and prosperous societies based on sustainable economic development. At the same time, you enjoy some of the highest employment rates in Europe. In the Faroe Islands, being open for business <clears throat> is not a new phenomenon. You have a healthy business structure. You encourage women's participation in the economy. And you stand to gain more from innovative economic development. You invest in cognitivity and renewable energy to boost independence from imported fuels. You share renewables. Your share of renewables is already more than half of the electricity consumption and growing. As an island nation, this is excellent for your economy. In short, the Faroe Islands have a lot to bring to the table. Ideas, experience, and knowledge. And best practice to share with others in Arctic region. That is why conferences like this are so important. I think we all agree that environmental concerns are very important when we create economic development in the Arctic. Of course, we all want to preserve the unique nature and the rich natural resources, but this should not prevent Arctic states from exploiting the possibilities and new business opportunities that is on offer. The prospects for Arctic business development are getting better. But we need to further stimulate business development. To create strong and sustainable Arctic communities with a focus on fighting poverty, on better health care, on better education systems, and on financial sustainability also. It is difficult to discuss development in the Arctic without mentioning the importance of the Arctic Council. In order to safeguard the right to sustainable economic development, we suggest that the upcoming Arctic Council strategy puts focus on bringing the Arctic Council closer to the Arctic Economic Council. In essence, closer to business. People in the Arctic need to be able to make a living. And the nations in the Arctic Council must always strike a balance between economic growth, social consideration, and environmental protection. Startups and small companies make up the vast majority of companies in the Arctic. In the Nordic Arctic, they employ around two-thirds of all employed. These companies are highly dependent on financing in order to secure dynamic and sustainable communities. But in parts of the Arctic region, financing is not readily available due to the last lack of risk willingness by investors, and often cross-border business projects have difficulties obtaining financing. One reason is the lack of coordination among national business financing systems. That is why we have decided, in cooperation with Greenland, the Faroe Islands, and the Arctic Economic Council, to launch a mapping of the financing possibilities in the Arctic. Based on the mapping, we will examine ideas that can lead to improvement of the Arctic investment climate. 
One key question to consider is if it is possible to achieve better synergy among the existing financing tools while building on the local and regional human resources. We will also focus on identifying initiatives to ensure an improved investment climate. This could involve identifying possible models for a new regional and international financial instrument. Through this project, we hope to make a useful contribution that will bring forward the sustainable development agenda in the Arctic. This brings me to the Sustainable Development Goals. In 2015, the world community took a major step forward with the adaption of the seven key goals. The SDGs take a holistic approach to development. Sustainability can lead the way to cooperation among public, private and regional actors. Companies that align the business model with the SDGs are better fit to meet the market demands in the future. Denmark believes that governments need to take ownership of the SDGs and follow up the growing private sector engagement to providing platforms and competitive concepts to work with. We must take local and indigenous people as the primary sources for development and integrate their points in the planning. We need to continue to ensure the best possible living conditions for the Arctic inhabitants. That said, the precondition for sustainable development obviously is a peaceful and stable Arctic. We must continue on the track of dialogue and cooperation. The cooperation of the eight Arctic states in the Arctic Council and the Iluset Declaration signed by the five Arctic coastal states are important cornerstones in a well-functioning governance structure. We should nurture and further develop the important cooperation across the Arctic. And this is exactly why Denmark and Greenland has decided to host an inclusive meeting between all members of the Arctic Council in two weeks. The meeting marks the 10th anniversary of Iliuset's declaration, the declaration in which the five Arctic coastal states mutually confirm their obligation to resolve disputes through negotiation and based on international law. Thank you very much.